Hi guys, Royal Tanker back again. Uh, pretty much it's been a little while since our last video. Um, what can I say? Pretty much work, that usual doodah. Um, and pretty much I haven't been really figuring out what to put out for you guys. Um, so I've gone out on a limb a little bit today. Um, and I've gone with this, the Basilisk. Now, the Bathless is a bit of a question mark for some people, whether they should t take one or two or so what, or not to take any. In my opinion, I think it's down to what game and what board size you play with this thing. If it's a small board, mm, it, it depends what you come up against. If it's like... Loads of heavy infantry, like Space Marines, the Primaris Marines, Chaos Marines, anything like that. Then the Basilisk will be quite good at it, because it's got the Strength 9, and it does a minus 3 to their armor. So, that drops their Terminators down to a f pretty much a 5 plus save. But, I think this will be quite good against, like, a character, maybe. If the character is willing to get too close to this thing, but by then, this will probably not be hanging around that long. Um, but, if the character is quite out in the open, and they're the closest thing to this thing, it might be quite good at killing them. Um, just, just for that D3 damage, but it does heavy D6. So if you can get a really good hit roll with this thing... You could potentially kill a character off right there, but just depends, because it's a Guardsman vehicle, it's hitting on fours, so it's typical of any other Guardsman or anything like that. Um, what is there to say? It's not a bad vehicle, I will give it that. It is not a bad vehicle, but it really comes to shine when you have like a massive board, so... Like, 24 inches is its maximum range of this gun. This gun has a maximum range of 240 inches. That, in its own, is just saying this thing should stay as far away as possible. Heck, stick this thing in the corner of the board. This does not need line of sight to the target. It just really doesn't. Um, which is good, so you can practically park this behind a building and just let it keep firing as long as you want. Uh, so, we'll get on to a couple of the stats now. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if I keep pausing here and there, guys. It's just that my throat keeps getting a little bit dry and things like that. So, it's got a movement of 12 when it's on full hit points. Now, that means it's quite manoeuvrable. So, this thing, if something decides to get a little bit too close, you can... Get this thing out of danger and put something in the way to stop whatever's coming after it. Uh, ballistic skill 4, so it's hitting on 4s. Uh, and in close combat, if you ever want to put this thing in the close combat, which I doubt you do. Uh, it's got 3 attacks, so pretty standard of any vehicle in the game, more or less. Um, weapon skill 6, so it's only hitting on 6s in close combat. Uh, it's strength 6, it's toughness 6, 11 wounds, so it's adequate, it, it'll it stick around for a little while. Leadership of 7, and it's got a 3 plus save. So, pretty, pretty all round stats for, for a lightly armoured open top vehicle. Uh, thankfully, this thing doesn't have the open top special rule anymore, like in previous editions, so that's quite good. Um, the weapons, it has the Earthshaker cannon. Which has a range of 240 inches. Uh, it's heavy D6. Strength 9. Minus 3 to the armor. And does D3 damage. Now. This weapon has an ability. So this big weapon has an ability. Roll 2 dice for the number of attacks. When firing this weapon. And discard the lowest result. So I believe that means. When you're rolling the heavy D6. Instead of rolling, I believe, instead of like rolling one dice for each shot, you're actually rolling two dice. So you're technically rolling 12 dice for a heavy D6. 
and you discard the lowest results. Um, this weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. So this thing, like I said, can sit behind a building and keep firing all day. Um, in the box, you don't get a specific weapon, so you might need to nick this off another vehicle in your guard collection. Which, it can have a heavy bolter in the hole. Um, so, pretty standard, range 36, heavy 3, strength 5, minus 1 to the armor, 1 damage. But the weapon you get is a heavy flamer, which... I guess you, I guess it just comes, uh, pretty much, uh, I just upgraded it with a heavy flamer, just in case it's like, for example, there's a couple of men in front of it, and I think this thing can deal with them, then I'll let you drive this up and then use the flamer, but typically everybody will want to put a heavy bolter on this thing, but your choice, however you want to, like, Put it in its role. Um, what else is there? There is the Heavy Flamer. Range 8, Heavy D6, Strength 5. It's pretty much the same stats as the Heavy Bolter. Except the weapon automatically hits. So, there's that. Uh, it's got the Vehicle Squadron. So, the unit must be set up within 6 inches of each other. Before they can spread out. Uh, explodes. We all know what happens there. Um, smoke launchers, so this thing has a chance to pretty much shoot smoke and then get out of the way or if something's planning to fire at this next turn then using smoke will probably give it a slightly better chance of survival uh, what else is there? Um, we'll just flick to the points, oh and it's got a power rating of 7 so pretty, pretty big in the number there uh, the points value for the basilisk is 100 points so plusing on the heavy flamer just bear with me it is 17 points so that's a 117 point unit there which in all fairness isn't isn't that bad i mean you could probably get away with taking one of these in a 500 point list if you wanted i mean i'm not sure what you want to do with this in a 500 point list but you can have that in a 500 point list if you're playing guard. I mean, guardsmen right now are like dirt cheap for 500 points. You could take about 40 men plus one of these. Plus, oh god, uh, probably a couple of sentinels or something like that. Um, but, why have one when you can have two? Yes, I have got two basilisks. Um, just because, one, it was... My birth, uh, my birthday a while back, and I was gonna go for a bang blade, guys. Literally, I was gonna get a bang blade, but I felt like I wasn't getting much out of it, so I went with two basilisks because they were slightly cheaper in price, and I've always wanted basilisks as well. So, yep. Yeah, so I've got two basilisks now. Just to point out, yes, there is no crew on the back. The reason why there's no crew on the back, and some other painters and builders will say this as well, um, it's easier to paint the model without the um, without the men on the back because if the men are on the back, they'll be a little bit difficult and a little bit fiddly to paint around. So if you leave the crewmen off, then you can paint them separately, and then you can like peg them or just glue them, but. Word of advice, if you do paint this and you don't like drill a hole or anything, you know, peg peg the guy into it. Um, don't put too much paint in one spot where you want the crewmen to go. Because if you do, the plastic glue won't be able to stick to the plastic because there's just so much paint in the way. So I would probably say, like, mark out the area, like, maybe... I don't know, after you've done your base coat, uh, probably like get a pencil or something and just engrave the area where you want the crewmen to go and then just avoid that little area as best you can. Um, or you can just do the easy way and when the full thing's painted up, just drill a hole in the bottom and then just drill another hole in the bottom of the feet of one of the uh, men and then just peg him in. 
because that'll be make it much easier for transportation. So, in my opinion, I would say, depending on what situation you come up against, a bathless will be good in some cases, while in other cases they may not. But in in my opinion, I don't think a garden regiment would be a regiment without having at least a basilisk. Because at least it gives you some more maneuverability and... Well, not maneuverability, just more options for the battles ahead. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, and, yeah, please like, subscribe... Uh, leave comments down below saying if you like the videos, if you like the info, and if there's any particular units you want me to relook at or anything you want me to look at in future. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll hope to see you in the next one.